In this video, I'm going to show you how to rip off a pattern from an existing garment. Say you have a favorite dress that you just get a lot of compliments in, or you really like the fit of it, and you want it in a different color or even a different patterned fabric, this is the way to do that. It's a little more difficult than just deconstructing the garment and laying your pattern pieces flat on the table so you can directly trace the shapes. We're going to preserve this dress and because the seams are constructed, it naturally makes a 3D form. And we're gonna use straight pins and a penetrable tabletop to pivot around um, so we can basically get the shape of each piece. I chose this dress because, um, well one, it just fits really well and I always get a lot of compliments when I wear it. I think just because the simple style and also the print is pretty cute and a lot of people uh, tend to like that in the summer so um, I just figure why not make a bunch of these if I can, right? It's a typical button-up dress with a spread collar um, so it shouldn't be too hard. Um, different garments will be less or more difficult depending on what it is and how complicated it is but most of this is applicable to every garment. So you'll be able to sort of apply these techniques to whatever you want to rip off. Okay, to do this, you're going to need, obviously, some patterning paper, a good amount, depending on your garment, either a yard or two yards. You wanna have an L square, obviously, or some sort of longer straight edge that you can make long lines with. You want to have a clear ruler. This is every pattern maker's best friend right here. Some sort of version of a clear ruler. You need a tracing wheel, not the soft um, rounder edges. You want the pokey sprocket on the end. Um, you need to be able to penetrate pretty well through the fabric and the patterning paper. Uh, potentially a flexible ruler not necessary but you may need this you need some paper cutting scissors straight pins just standard straight pins whatever you have will work and then a pencil um, this is a mechanical pencil you don't want to use a regular graphite like number two pencil because when it gets dull the bottom of it gets bigger and then you are unknowingly adding tiny measurements to every side of your patterning pieces. Um, so that's why I go with mechanical. Uh, it's just more uh, concise. Um, and then lastly, you're gonna need some sort of penetrable top on your table or the floor, wherever you're working. I'm using a, a patterning um, grid it's cardboard, so any large cardboard box would work as well. Even better than this, though, you could use a cork tabletop or a padded tabletop. Uh, not dissimilar from what they use as a padded ironing board. It's just some layers of batting covered with muslin, usually, and that is very easy to stick pins into. The reason we need this is because when we are laying out our patterning pieces, we will have a direct trace of a shape, and then because of the constructed seams, we have to pivot from one spot and release another spot to lay it flat. So we have to be able to pin the garment directly to whatever tabletop you have, and then um, pivot from there. So you need to have this penetrable top. It is a must-have. You're not able to do it without it. It would be very, very difficult and you would probably have a lot of varying shapes. Okay, so before I start anything, preparing my tabletop or anything, I want to make sure my garment is completely flat ironed. I'm going to take this to the ironing board and iron it as well as I can. You don't want any wrinkles in the garment that um, is taking up fabric space and changing the shape of your actual pieces. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, the first thing I want to do, like I do with any pattern making project, I want to start with 
a long line to establish two things. I want to establish a straight edge if I have one for the center front or center back and it establishes the grain. This dress is um, relatively easy to see the grain because it's a pretty balanced looking plain weave. Um, so that is going to help a lot when we're trying to determine the grain of our pattern pieces. But first off, I'm going to do the front panel. And you can do the right or left. I'm accustomed to always doing the front on the right side of the wearer. Everything actually on the right side of the wearer. So your front would be going this direction in the back the opposite direction. So that's just what I'm accustomed to. You can do either side. Obviously you don't have to do both sides. You do one side and then trans and use that for the opposite side. So we're only doing one trace off of the front, one trace off of half of a back, one sleeve, and then half of the collar. The tricky thing that is probably going to be the most difficult of this um, is going to be getting these fisheye darts. This design, while very simple, it does have fisheye darts, one or two in the front on each princess seam. So I will go over how to get those transferred onto your patterning paper as we go along. So now I'm going to take my straight edge and give myself a really strong long line all the way up and down this patterning paper. This is important to be very precise with this because this is the line that everything else uh, comes off of. So you really want to be accurate and right on the dots if you're using this alphanumeric patterning paper. Um, it's very easy to just get it directly on those lines. So like any button placket, we need to build in a um, extension. And I'm going to use this initial line that I did, that I made, not for the edge of the um, dress right here, but I'm going to line it up with the buttonholes. It's the buttonholes themselves that are center front. So I'm going to line up my buttonholes directly on that long line that I just made. And it's okay if you have a little bit of some squiggly areas maybe, like this, it doesn't look very straight, you're going to fix all of that. So that is where my... Um, that is where the edge of my dress needs to be for this line to represent center front. Now, this extension right here is built in, meaning that it's a piece all in one with this pattern piece. So to have enough fabric to fold back around and seam allowance to tuck under, so it's a finished edge underneath there, we are going to give ourselves some extra room on the edge here. So I'm going to give myself a mark about a half inch away because half of this is where the buttonholes land. So I need to establish where this edge is. And then I need to be able to travel all the way back to this stitch, this top stitch and also have some extra to tuck under there to finish off the edge. Um, you could also serge the edge in there and then just sew it down, but I'm gonna do it properly so it's going to be folded and sewn. Um, so after I establish this edge, I'm going to give it a whole inch and a half 
extra to be able to fold back around. Okay, so both of these lines, I'm going to extend all the way up and down because it's going to need that entire placket extension all the way up and down. So now I'm going to pin this front piece in place. So it is stabilized, it's not going to move, and I can start working out the outer shape and see how I'm just poking through the fabric, through the patterning paper, through all the way to the cardboard underneath there. And you don't have to do a crazy amount of pins, just enough to make sure it's not going to slide around. This is where the finesse sort of comes into place. What we're trying to do is keep this line straight right here and flatten out this first piece that we're doing this front center front panel and we want it to get as flat as possible obviously because all of the seams and structure up here we're not going to get it completely flat and that's when the pivoting is going to come into play now we might be able to get pretty close because of this rip in the sleeve, but we won't be able to get all the way. Okay, so let's start tracing then. Once you feel like you have the panel relatively close to as flat as you're going to get, go ahead and start tracing off the basic shape. So it dips up a little bit right here. I want to correct that. So I'm going to come here down at the most bottom, the furthest area of this hem, the sweep of the dress. And I'm just going to extend it at a very perpendicular angle to my center front. Then I can come around all the way to this side seam and establish that. I can see this seam because it's sewn together. It's picking up a little bit. It's making it peak right here at the bottom of the hem. So I know that when laying flat and not sewn together, it wouldn't normally do that. So I'm gonna allow it to relax right here. I'm gonna give it a little bit of wiggle room because that's what it would normally want to do. And I'm gonna Blend it right back into the bottom of this hem. Now I'm freestyling with my pencil because I can go back later and clean it up. We just want the general shape of this. We're going to true everything up and um, compare pattern pieces to each other afterward and that ensures that everything matches up well and we've got the same length going on. Now that I have that, I'm going to anchor down my side seam. Just double checking that everything's as flat as I can get it, pretty much. And I'm pinning it just a tiny bit away from the side seam because I'm going to be using the tracing wheel directly on that side seam. So I don't want to have any obstacles in my way, really. So this area where this fisheye dart, I know that you can't see it on the camera, but this fisheye dart is from right here to right here. And fisheye is what they refer to as a dart, like a sliver out of your pattern piece that goes into two points and it does not feed into any seam. Continuing to flatten out this shape. Be careful that you're looking at this area over here and you're not pulling it so much that it overcompensates and um, skews this line too much over here. So let's anchor this very top of your side seam right here. And we can even continue a little bit up the armhole.
And you can see how this is bubbling a little bit. You really don't want to have that extra volume right there when you're trying to find the true shape of a patterning piece. So if you have that happening, we have it because of this fisheye dart and it's supposed to create volume for the bust and for the hip down here and so it's small at the natural waist. We just have to use our judgment and keep this in mind. And when we're tracing over this area, flatten it as best as you can to get the truest shape. Now take your tracing wheel and because we have to get this seam without deconstructing the dress, let's just trace directly over this the sewn seam and this seam is not a straight a line this has a tiny subtle curve to it okay that is our side seam traced now we need to start the armhole the front armhole so this is the point where we need to start to release this other side. See how um, I can't get this to lay flat because of this over here. But because we've already traced this area over here, I can now let go of this and release it to lay this flat over here. But what I want to do is make sure that none of this changes because we're trying to finish off this line. The fabric can tell me what it wants to do. And I need a little more, so I'm going to take this guy out and I'm going to put him right here. I'm just moving the anchors over to this area because I don't want this to move anymore, but this can shift now to help lay this flat. So while we have this anchored still up here, I'm going to get this shape of the neckline because it is relative to this line. I don't want to move this and release this yet until I get this shape. So when you're doing this and you're working with a woven fabric, you really want to pay attention to the weave and the direction of the grain. You can tell if something is laying flat as it's supposed to be in the shape that it was originally, if your weave is not warped. If it looks pretty, um, pretty blocked, meaning the weft and the warps are where they should be, then you're in a good spot. You do not want it to look like it's pulling um, too aggressively in one area. And another thing I just saw was it was lifting up with the... Um, straight pins, the dress was traveling up the straight pins, meaning it was not holding it all the way down. If that starts to happen in the area, put two pins together and sort of um, cross pin them, one in one direction and one in the other direction. And that will secure it in a way that won't let it travel up the straight pin. Now establishing this curve of the neckline. Okay, now that we have that, I want to pin this shoulder seam right where the neckline meets the shoulder seam. And I'm going to put two there so we can just um, prevent that garment from traveling up the pins again. Now I'm going to establish this shoulder seam right here. I'm going to anchor down the edge of the shoulder seam where it meets the armhole. I'm gonna cross pin it. So 
so it's very secure. And now I can finish the rest of the armhole. Okay, that's our basic shape of this front panel, this center front panel. Now the last thing I want to do is take notes about this fisheye dart. I wanna note what area it starts and finishes, and then I wanna see how much volume the dart is in the back. I'm going to trace right over this fisheye dart. I'm not gonna go past it. I'm not gonna start before it starts. I'm gonna give myself exactly where it starts and finishes. I do want to take note, and this can change. This is a design feature that you're able to modify if you want. But I want to give myself the center of each buttonhole, and I can perfect these, this placement after the fact but I wanna give myself a roundabout note. It's really wise just to give yourself as much information as possible with this for later reference. Okay, I'm gonna unpin everything that I've anchored down and release the entire garment. All you wanna do is give yourself some light lines to fill in everything Here's my fisheye dart and the placement of it. I can see right now that the center front fisheye darts, these guys right here, the depth of the very center of it is five eighths on the double. So it's one and a quarter inches total I'm gonna write five eighths on the double. Then we're going to have to add that to this area over here. We cannot add it to center front. If you have a side front piece that has anything like that, this would be able to come out of both sides. You would be able to displace that in the left and the right side. But center front does not change in that way. It needs to stay very straight. It would never have, unless it was a specific design feature, it would never have a weird uh, shape anywhere. This is a very straight placket on straight grain. So we're not touching that ever, the straightness of the center front or center back. Well, center back does change. Uh, because you do have fit in the back, so I take that back. So, because you've traced it off, now you can see all of your tracing and you wanna just give yourself loose um, sketches on that and just block out everything. Normally your bodice side seam right here is very straight, so I use my straight edge just to help there. I see it's coming into a curve at the natural waist. And remember how this is not a typical um, straight A-line seam. It has a slight curve to it, which is a stylized seam. So it has a little bit of shape to it. The shoulder seams are normally always straight, unless you're talking about like a tailored jacket or blazer. Remember that your, your um, corners that are sewn together need to make a 90 degree angle. You want the center of your neckline to be perpendicular with that center front. So come out a little bit at a very straight 90 degree angle and then make it blend nicely into your neckline shape. We want this inch and a quarter to be added over here to this seam and it's going to disappear 
It's going to be full inch and a quarter at the very middle of it, and then it will disappear in the same spot that these fisheye darts disappear. So I'm going to go across this grid and give myself a little cross mark right here. That is where my addition needs to disappear. Same with the bottom. That's where the bottom of my fisheye dart needs to disappear. So because, um, because that 5.8 seems a little extreme to me, I'm gonna make mine just a simple one inch. You want to find the middle of your fisheye dart. This fisheye dart is eight inches long, so I'm gonna give myself a halfway point at four inches. That's the very middle of my fisheye dart. That's where the biggest measurement needs to be. And because this is a five eighths on the double dart, I'm gonna give myself five eighths on either side of that line. Notice that I am lining up my ruler so it's perpendicular with everything. Giving myself little cross marks so I know exactly where this measurement stops. Now I can take those outermost cross marks and bring them right to the points of the dart. And you do want to clean this up. You don't have um, points like this, not on this design. You want to make them just a little curved, a little softer. Nothing on this dress is really structured too much. And you normally would use your French curve for this to get like perfect curves, but I do a lot of freehand style stuff, so use your judgment. If you're good at stuff like that, then by all means, do it your way. Because um, we need to add that fabric to here, right? We can't add it to center front. That needs to remain straight. So we add that extra to the side, okay? The total of this dart is one and a quarter. So at the same height, lining up with the center, the biggest part of the dart, I'm going to come right across to my side seam and mark one and a quarter inches. Then I'm going to blend that cross mark back into my top of my side seam. And I'm gonna blend it also into the bottom of my side seam. I'm not going all the way down to the bottom. I'm just blending into the spot that makes the most sense. It's like um, from this point of the center that's equal to your dart right here and blending it to the outermost point of your side seam. So just line up from that point to where you traced it and it will show you naturally where it wants to be. And we're just gonna make that nice and pretty curved like this. Okay. You also want to give yourself the um, extension that you have. Remember that we have a half inch to the edge of our dress, to the center front edge. And then we have a whole inch and a half 
added as the um, back of the extension, sort of the facing of the extension. So it can wrap back around. I'm going to bring my sweep of my skirt all the way out to the rest of that extension by lining my ruler up perpendicular with my straight grain and bringing it right across. I'm going to bring my neckline out in the same way, perpendicular with everything else, and bring it out to meet the rest of that extension. Now when we put our um, seam allowance in there, we are going to have a uh, notch right here for center front. Um, you can give yourself a notch for the edge of the fabric if you want. But whatever type of language you're using, symbols, patterning symbols, make sure you know what you're telling yourself. Um, if they if it makes sense to you that's fine if other people are meant to read this then you need to use universal language patterning language but as long as it makes sense to you then that's great make little notes to yourself if you need to that's fine um, you will have to have a single notch on your front armhole at some point and you can do that when um, actually you should do that before you start tracing everything off. You want to give yourself little chalk marks on the front and the back of your sleeve. Um, you always have one notch on the front sleeve and two notches that line up on the back part of your sleeve from the, the back sleeve to the back part of the armhole. So to get those markings when you're tracing everything off, you give yourself little chalk marks before you trace anything off, and then you can establish those when you're tracing your pieces off. Um, but I sort of uh, wing it and do it after, but you should do it properly and make your chalk marks before. Okay, moving on to the back of the dress, I went ahead and gave myself a straight grain that's going to act as our center back line. If you don't have a center back seam, you want to establish where your center back line is. You can do that with safety pins or you can uh, give yourself a basting stitch uh, just to indicate where that exact center is. On this dress, we do have a center back seam, so I'm going to line that seam up with the line that I've already drawn. And you want to anchor that center back seam right down to the paper and the cardboard. So go ahead and do a double cross pin to anchor that very securely to that line. And I'm not stretching or pulling the fabric at all. I'm simply letting it do what it wants to do. Okay, now that I have my center back established, take your tracing wheel and trace around the curve of the neckline. After establishing and anchoring your shoulder seam where it meets your neckline. Just go ahead and establish that. Now you can go around the neckline fairly easily. I'm not moving the fabric, I'm just placing the sprockets of the tracing wheel through the fabric. Since the front panel is free and released, I can gently move this shoulder seam up and flat where it would normally lay if it were a single panel free of all the other panels.
If it helps, you can release the very bottom of your center back seam to help uh, change the 3D form of the dress. So it allows this section up here to lay even more flat. Okay, it seems like it wants to be about right there, so I'm going to anchor the other side of my shoulder seam where it meets my sleeve cap with a cross pin, and then I can trace my shoulder seam. Now we're able to travel down the back armhole and start anchoring the shape of the armhole. So I'm sort of rolling the fabric. I'm being very careful not to be too aggressive with it to try to um, allow the fabric to do what it wants to do without stretching the material without jeopardizing any of the other anchors. If we are too aggressive with it, it's going to alter the shape. Okay, next we want to release this up here so it allows this to be flat. We want to keep these bottom anchors in place. The bottom anchors at the bottom of your um, armhole, they need to stay. Now these top ones don't matter. This doesn't matter, we already have that shape. Now see what that allows you to do with your fabric if it lays completely flat again so you can get your side seam traced and your hem, then you're in a good spot. If you need to release another one, say this one, we don't really need that, then that's fine. But as long as we have a couple here, definitely the one that's anchoring down the very top of your side seam where it comes to your under sleeve seam, that one absolutely needs to be secure and in the right spot. And now let's see what shape this side seam is doing. Now remember, this center back is in two panels. Each side has a fisheye dart, just like the front did, and that's why this side seam is curving so extremely. But once we get the placement of our dart and the shape of our side seam, after everything is traced out, we can distribute that dart volume to the side of your uh, dress. Don't forget to put your center back anchors back in if you took them out to release the top of the dress. Don't forget to replace those. And again, we don't have a standard A-line seam on the side. We've got a slight curve to it. 
for this particular style. So I feel like this is a good spot now we can anchor down the bottom of our side seam where the sweep of the skirt is. Okay, I think that is the best that we can do without pulling our center back seam too far over to the right. So I'm going to start tracing off our side seam. And then I'll finish by tracing off the sweep, the hem of your dress. And then lastly, I need the placement of the fisheye dart. So it's, I don't want to go any further than it starts and stops. So I'm trying to trace off exactly where the fisheye dart is on the dress. Okay, and you can always clean that up afterward. Fisheye darts are usually gonna be very um, perpendicular or parallel with your straight grain. So now that we have the basic shape of that, we can release all of these anchors. Make sure to get the depth of your fisheye dart and make a note of that. So this one in particular is a half inch on the double. So full inch depth in that dart. So I'm gonna give myself a half inch on the double note. And this is the point where I would lightly trace out my tracing marks on the patterning paper. I'm not being too uh, picky about it. I'm just giving myself a little bit darker marks so I can see it a little bit better side seam at the bodice is always going to be a straight line so I'm going to use my straight edge to help out right there. We've got this super dramatic curve at the natural waist because of our fisheye dart. That's going to change in a second when we add the depth of the dart to the side seam. And I'm going to follow this curve right down to the hem. You can use your um, hip curve to help uh, smooth out those curves later or if you have a really good eye and you like to freehand that then that's an option too. Smaller curves like your arm, your uh, armholes can be done with the French curve. Shoulder seam is a very straight line so I'm going to go over my tracing marks with my straight edge. And then I'm going to finish it off by connecting the neckline to the shoulder seam. And I've got a nice 90 degree angle at center back where my neckline is. Now, lastly, we need to establish the center of your fisheye dart. Let's see, this one now is nine inches. So this is where I'm going to add the majority of the um, displaced dart uh, depth. So because we had a half inch on the double in that dart, the full amount is an inch. So I'm going to add that inch back to the side seam so that when we do construct this fisheye dart, it's going to bring us back into this nice nipped waist at the natural waist. So I don't want to go out any further than here. That's a full inch. And it needs to blend right back into the top of your side seam. And then also blend into the widest part of your hip side seam.
Okay, so that's our new side seam. Let's uh, give ourselves a Uh, just the shape of the dart, which is going to be a full inch in depth. And then I can bring both of those points right to that middle. Uh, one thing to remember actually is that when we find the center of our fisheye dart in the back, you're going to have a longer dart on the top where the bodice is and then shorter on the bottom. So uh, the biggest part of your fisheye dart should line up with the most dramatic part of your side seam curve and that will give you the correct displacement when uh, figuring out how much and where to add that extra material to your side seam. So remember, when you're finding um, where the biggest part of your dart is in the back, it's not going to be half and half. The upper part of your dart, because it is a less dramatic, it's more subtle, um, it's going to be longer so it can uh, shape it in a more subtle way up the back. The bottom has to start going over the butt, so it needs to be shorter and more dramatic. Okay, so there is our fisheye dart. Now, there's nothing special about the center back line. We don't have to have an extension. All you need to do is give yourself the seam allowance that you wanna sew by, or however you want to treat your seam in the back, whether you wanna do a French seam or just serge it. Um, that's totally up to you. And you're going to clean these patterns up. Uh, you're gonna true them up to each other. Take the front pattern, the uh, front panel, compare the shoulder seams together, compare the side seams together, see if the seams are um, making the same shapes as far as curves go. Um, you want to make sure that everything's just matching up how long the side seams are. And once you do that, you can give yourself a seam allowance and sort of make everything pretty. Everything fits together and you can start giving yourself notches if you didn't already do that with chalk before you started tracing off. Um, with the sleeves, it's a little bit more trouble to try and trace them off of a sewn garment, a constructed garment, if you're trying to rip it off and, and grab the pattern off of them like we were doing for the body of this dress. It's more hassle than just drafting a sleeve pattern from scratch. So if you need to draft a sleeve pattern, just take the height of your sleeve, your armhole and that will be the depth or the height of your sleeve cap. And then measure around this armhole curve with your flexible ruler, and that will give you the length of the arm or the sleeve cap as well. So that's not too difficult of, a, of something to draft. And I would much rather do that than try to wrangle the sleeve that's sewn together and try to trace it off. Um, but I do want to talk about one last thing, which is really easy, and it is the collar of this. And to get the shape of this collar, it's very, very easy. You're going to take the center seam of the back here, which we already have. You're only going to trace off one half of this because you can mirror it, and that makes much more sense than trying to trace off both sides because they're never going to match exactly anyway. So you only want to trace off one side of anything and then double it. But to do that, you would do the same thing you do to start off any patterning project. Establish your center line or your grain line, which is also going to act as my center back line for this. 
So I'm giving myself one line long enough to cover the height of the collar. I'm going to pin that center back line right to that line that we've already drawn and anchor it down. Cross pinning. Remember, that's the most stable anchoring method so it can't slip one direction or the other. Now you want to pay special attention to how this collar is curved. It's not going to be um, exactly flat, exactly straight across horizontal. There is a slight curve to it, okay? And hopefully your fabric has enough integrity in it to tell you how it wants to lay flat. But if you can't, then get a roundabout um, shape of it and you can always sample it and try it out first. Or you can just draft your collar from the start anyway because that's an easy piece as well. It should just have a slight curve to it though. To come around the neckline, it needs a little bit of help. So it's about a half inch above a horizontal line. If you were to draft it as a horizontal piece, it comes up at the end of your collar points about a half inch above that horizontal line. So imagine that, and that's how subtle the curve is. But I can see just from laying it just like this um, that I'll be able to trace it with no problem and it's probably going to work out. And really, you don't even have to um, use your tracing wheel. If it's just the edge of the garment like this, just use your pencil and get as close to the edge as possible. And like we already talked about, this is a pretty standard spread collar that you would see on a button-up dress shirt for men or women. Um, now I'm going to trace the neckline, the bottom edge of the collar. And I'm letting it do that very subtle curve that it wants to do. Okay. So you do want to give yourself notches in the center here, um, but that is about it. Uh, make sure that you true everything together, compare the sides of your patterns together, look at your side seams, see if they're the same length, see if they're the same curve. If they are two different types of curves trying to sew together, you're going to have a lot of pulling, a lot of dragging in your fabric, which is uh, never good. So be sure to marry up the curves and the lengths of your side seams, very important. Um, establish any notches. Yeah, consider your fabrication. Consider what fabric you're using for this project. It's probably wise to pick a similar fabric of the original garment, but maybe you wanna take a risk. Maybe your risk is gonna turn out better than the original, who knows? But just remember that different fabrics will react differently. They will act differently. They'll feel differently. So uh, be mindful of that. But now that you have your own special pattern, you can sort of make as many as you want. So you can mess up as much as you want. 